Well, hi there again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be heading over to the bench and actually getting some work done instead of hearing me flapping my jaw all the time. We're going to start working on the uh, lighting system that's going to be going in John's Polar Lights uh, 350 scale classic enterprise. This will be part four of the build series. And what I'm going to be working with today is we're going to uh, do some modifications to that Polar Lights Round 2 lighting kit that, uh, that a lot of you guys have seen out there. And one of the things that troubles me with that kit is that you have these connectors that connect the various LED strips together for the interior window lighting <clears throat> on the model and uh, that's an issue that I don't really feel comfortable with lasting over time that I think it's possible that one of those connectors could possibly come loose or something and that entire circuit uh, the way that they have it wired from Polar Lights is wired in series and basically what that means everybody is that's a that's like a chain if you want to think of it that way so if any link in that chain breaks anything beyond the area where the brake is there's got, not going to be any power getting to it so you can see that that could cause a real issue because that Polar Lights kit uh, depends on power to go through one system all the way through to, to uh, get power to the lights, to get power to the bassard collectors, to get power to the stroll boards and everything else. So if you had an issue there, it could be a real problem. So what I'll be doing today is using some of my magnet wire. We're going to go in and we're going to solder uh, all of our wiring onto each LED strip. And we're going to set it up as a parallel circuit. And what that means in simple terms is that each individual component will have its own power source. And they'll all branch off and feed into one main power line that comes in. So if we have an individual component failure down the road over over time or you know just over age and things like that, that only that little component itself will fail and everything else will continue to work. And I think that's a much better approach to take when you wire up these models. So we're going to get to that in just a second. I was watching one of Steve Neal's videos the other day and I noticed that he was having trouble with uh, um, putting uh, solder or you know actually melting the insulation on this magnet wire uh, with his solder iron. So what I'm going to do is set up on the bench here and show you a little bit of that too. I noticed he had his uh, temperature set at about 700 on his uh, uh, solder iron there and so I'll set mine up at 700 and we'll show you that uh, what you need to do is you need to uh, put a little bit of solder on the tip of that iron. I noticed uh, Steve started off by wiping the, the tip clean on his uh, little foam pad there and then uh, was trying to solder it and it didn't work but what you need to do is have a little bit of solder on that tip and what that does is that superheated solder on there will actually help you melt that uh, insulation and melt it very quickly, just a second or two, and it should melt right off of there. So we'll show you how that works. And then uh, talk. a couple of you guys have asked me about uh, other YouTube videos that I watch and what are some of my favorites. Well, I wanted to mention that you know Steve does a good job in his videos, and uh, beginning modelers and stuff can go over there and find some tips on what he's doing. But uh, a really fascinating channel that I like to watch is Simon Merck's. Uh, Simon, uh, I've started watching his videos when uh, he was, uh, when I first started getting into YouTube a couple of years ago when I was looking for info and stuff about building models and I've been fascinated with his channel. Simon does really top quality work. Uh, he's got, uh, he makes his living building the models and he pays a lot of attention to quality and detail. He does a lot of little things along the way to make the model uh, built stronger and uh, all the detail he puts into it and he's the one that I've kind of modeled my work after as far as my skill level and what I'm trying to work to and achieve and I've got a long ways to go yet don't worry Simon but uh, I just wanted to say Simon I think you're a great guy I love the humor in your videos if you guys haven't seen Simon's videos you need to stop by and check it out it's good for a lot of information and model quality mo model building tips but it's also uh, you'll also get a really good laugh out of, out of it every time you stop by Simon does these great characters and Simon if anybody needs to get a show out there for model building I think it's you guy your show would be so entertaining and all the things that you do on there and I just think you do a really really great job and again you know they say it's good uh, business practice to uh, keep your secrets for whatever your business is and you know mentioning again that Simon uh, does uh, this for a living Simon's very forthcoming about sharing everything that he knows about the model building and that's really uh, nice of him to do that and that's a great asset to have somebody like that in the uh, model building community and that helps everybody out and that's what this is all about so Simon, I hope you're around for a long time, and if I'm ever down in Florida, I'd love to stop by and meet you and talk shop and have a couple beers and have some good laughs. So uh, anyway, Simon, I hope you're around for a long, long time, and uh, keep rocking on out there, buddy. We really appreciate what you're doing. So with that, guys, let's get over to the uh, bench now, and let's get going on this uh, lighting kit, and we'll show you first start off with that wiring and getting that solder onto that uh, magnet wire, and then we're going to start installing the uh, lighting kit into the model, and we'll go on from there. So. Hang tight, everybody. We'll be right back with that. 
All right, everybody, so here we are set up on the bench again like usual, and I'll show you what I've got going on here. You can see, uh, let me zoom in on this for you here uh, to the left. You can see that what we have there is we have one of the connectors that uh, is included with the uh, round two lighting kit, and it has this sort of uh, clamp device here that is designed to uh, fit over the uh, end of this uh, and, and lay over these two uh, connector tabs on this light strip here and clamp down on that and give you your connection there. Well, I'm just a little leery of that, a little scared of that, so I don't think I'm going to be going with that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, using some of this wire here, but we're going to cut these ends off and we're going to solder onto this. Uh, I'm going to be using magnet wire uh, to do the individual lighting uh, locations inside the uh, secondary hull here. Then we're going to tie all that together and then we're going to connect to the main harness, which will be this wire here. Uh, and that goes down and connects and runs the power out through the bottom of the model and into the power supply. And uh, let me talk about this magnet or this uh, LED strip lighting here for a second too. For you guys that may not be familiar with working with it, if you look at it closely here, you can see that every three bulbs here, you have these built-in resistors. So this doesn't need any resistor uh, when you hook it up. You can hook it up straight to power. It'll run anywhere between 7 volts DC to 12 volts DC and operate safely. But you can see that every three bulbs here, they've got a segment in this. Now it happens to be soldered right here, but normally it's just uh, together right here. And you can see that you have two of these um, uh, terminals that are butted together here. And that's th these are where you can make cuts in this if you want to cut this into segments. You want to make sure you never cut in between these three bulb segments here because the resistor's in there and if you cut in between that it's not going to function any longer. So you have to make sure when you look at these that you see these segments here and uh, you, you can make any kind of cut so you have three individual bulbs. And what they recommend in the instructions is that you um, use uh, three bulb segments here and I'll zoom in. I've already done one side of the hull here and you can see where I put them in. and. Uh, I'm using three individual bulb segments on these little pads that are in there that are indicated in the instructions where you're supposed to place everything. And notice that what I like to do as I work along, uh, you can see that I've, uh, I've tacked all this wiring down uh, using that same method that I've shown before. And I'll show you that again here in a minute, but I used the CA glue with a little bit of that zip kicker to uh, glue this wiring in place. And that way when I'm working with this, I don't have wires, you know, flopping all over the place and things like that. And it, keeps everything nice and neat and I'm also using uh, two different colored wires here red for positive and the green color for the negative that way if I ever have an issue with uh, uh, you know something going wrong here whatever I can trace my wiring and I know what my wiring is doing and not you know not having a hodgepodge of all different kinds of wires uh, helps to keep everything clean and helps you be able to figure out and troubleshoot something if something goes wrong too that's something to keep in mind so what I'm going to do now here guys is let me roll the camera back here and uh, I'll zoom in on my solder iron here if you can see it. Let me get this out a little further here for you so you can see. I've got this set up. Uh, get my magnet wire out here. I've got this, the iron uh, set up. If you can see the gauge there. Uh, it's at uh, 700 degrees. And uh, I've got my sponge wet there. And you want to keep your uh, solder iron tip in between soldering job, guys. You want to keep that clean. So. Anytime you, uh, you see how it's kind of got some crust built up on it, because when the solder sits on there over a period of time, it starts to uh, carbonize and get really nasty, and you want to, you don't want to have contamination in your solder joint. You can see when, you, when I wiped it off how shiny it turned and everything, but the, the key to um, getting this uh, magnet wire to, uh, to, to be able to melt the magnet wire, I'm going to go ahead and clamp some of it into my uh, helping hands here. And uh, the key to it is that you want to... Um, you want to have some solder on, on that tip, and as I mentioned a minute ago, that superheated solder will actually melt this. And I'm going to get set up here where hopefully I can zoom right in on that. Let me get it in a good position here where you guys can be sure to see it. I'm going to zoom in on this so you'll see uh, exactly how this works. And let me get focused on that for you. And then we're going to solder this real quick. That should be a pretty good angle there. Okay, what I'm going to do is uh, get my solder out here. There we go, and I'm just going to burn a little piece of it off so I can have it in my hand here. And um, you can see that uh, my iron, my uh, tip is clean, and I'm just going to come back and I'm going to put a little bit of solder on this tip, and, and uh, you see how it's uh, kind of spreading around. Now, you don't want a huge glob of it on there. You don't want to have it actually dripping off of there, but 
you just want to have enough where there's a little bit of solder clinging to that and I'm going to lay it on the bottom side of the wire because the heat actually goes up and you want to uh, transmit the heat through the wire like that and um, I'm just slightly moving it back and forth and letting that solder do its job and you can see just like that the solder is on there and it's uh, been tinned it melted right through the insulation and uh, I'll get you even tighter on this so you can see it hopefully here. If you look at that uh, tip of that wire now, it's not just on the outside of that wire, it is, it is completely covered. And what that does is it allows you to transfer the solder to whatever component you're soldering it to. So what I'll do now is I'm going to set up and uh, I've got uh, a little spot of, uh, I'm going to use leave about a, about a foot of this hanging off this. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my, uh, my uh, uh, tape here and I'm going to cut a section of it off. We're going to do a little three bulb section here just like we did on the other side and we're going to get this soldered and ready to go. So let me do this real quick. Again cutting right on that little segment where I told you. These are marked plus and minus so uh, some of this LED tape when you buy it it doesn't have that on there but you can test it with your uh, power supply or whatever you're using. I, I For testing I just have a little 9 volt battery here with a little clip on it that I'll just touch the wires on there. If you t if you set it up backwards, it's not going to fry it, but uh, that, that'll tell you which is plus and minus if it's not marked. So we've got this little wire on here now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing on this uh, uh, terminal here. We're going to tin these terminals uh, so that when we do have to solder our wire on there, it's just going to take a second to melt that solder and make a good bond. So let me go ahead and do that. Again, I'm tinning my tip here. And I just got a little bit of solder on there, and I'm just going to dab a little bit on there and let it transfer over to the... You see how it just grabbed right onto that as soon as I heated it up? And that's, that's as easy as that. So that's done. Now we can come over here with our uh, uh, wire that we tinned, and we're just going to lay it on this uh, positive connection here. And we're just going to touch it again. I don't want my wire getting into my tip there, but... Okay, just that quick. Did you see how quick I was able to touch that? It melted the solder on the uh, on this uh, piece of tape, and it melted the solder on the wire a little bit, and so we have an instant bond, and you can see how strong this is. I'm not going to be able to pull this off at all. I'll have to rip the whole thing apart in order to get it off of there. So That's soldering 101, guys. Um, there are more advanced soldering techniques that are out there, but just for modeling, building purposes, you just need to know a few of the basics. And uh, again, in, in between a few soldering components like that you want to go back and wipe that tip clean keep a damp sponge uh, and keep the tip clean and then keep the tip uh, uh, tinned and you won't have any problems at all uh, doing this soldering so all right what I'm gonna do now off camera guys is I'm gonna uh, come back and I'm gonna solder a bunch of those up I need uh, uh, three of them to put in here and then there's an area right up in this uh, area right here where you can see that they have these uh, kind of reinforcing brackets in here where there's a window group up in there, if you can see right this area right here, that uh, I noticed on my last build I had to put an extra piece in there because uh, you can see that casting light up from in here, it's going to uh, sort of block that off. So we're going to put a small little piece up in there too to make sure we get light up in that area. But what I'll do is get these pre-made and then I'm going to come back and show me putting those in and, and then we're going to lay down this wire just like I did on this side and show you how all that works. So I'll be right back with that. All right, everybody, well, we're back here. It's been just a couple of little minutes, and this is really easy to do here. I got all these soldered up, guys, and I'm going to start installing them. And you guys have seen some of this before, but we'll go over it again for some of you new to the channel. Um, so you can see that inside here they've got these little pads that are marked out, and these are where they're asking to put the uh, uh, lighting locations at. Now, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to do it in a couple spots the same, but on this section here I'm going to move it up just a little bit. I think I'm going to go above uh, the... Uh, there's one little round window port here. I think that goes. Nope, it doesn't even go all the way through. So I'm going to put one right over the top of that one. And uh, that way we're going to kind of change it so we're going to kind of get more even lighting from side to side. And that way, uh, you know, we're making sure that we're getting a little bit of light up to towards the top. And then, as I mentioned, I'm going to be putting a little strip in right here on uh, both sides that's going to actually get some light up in this little cubby hole up here that we've got to get some light to. So let's start putting these in now. What I use, guys, is this, uh, this, this, uh, LED tape, it has a backing on there. You peel this backing off of it and it sticks, but uh, I don't quite trust that either over time that it might come loose, so I use a little bit of this CA glue, and uh, I'll tack them down with that and then hit that with some of this kicker here, 
and make it dry instantly and uh, we'll do the same thing when we tack down the wires and like I said I like to when I go along with the wiring I like to tack it down along the way so it doesn't start getting crazy and and messy to work with one thing about CA uh, glue too, guys um, uh, people are out there telling you to use CA glue to build your model that's absolutely crazy because CA glue is not designed for styrene plastic at all uh, it doesn't penetrate the plastic and uh, you know it might be easier to get the model back apart or something like that and that's that should tell you right away that uh, the model is going to start falling apart over time if you built a model out of CA you're going to be in big trouble uh, people have asked me about the glue to use and uh, some people might laugh but I just use good old standard testers uh, cement this is designed for styrene plastic and what this does actually guys is it molecularly bonds the plastic together it actually uh, melts the plastic and creates a sort of a mini weld now uh, you can go out and spend money on the really expensive so-called hobby glue or things like that but trust me guys it doesn't work any better than this stuff right here you're wasting your money I kinda compare it to the guy that's not a very good golfer that goes out and buys a really really expensive set of golf clubs uh, that he hopes will make his game better but but you know he's not that good to begin with and it won't help him be any better and it's just kinda one of those things but one thing you really have to be thinking about is that you can see on this piece right here there's a little bit of overspray on these joints and so uh, before I put this together, I'll take a little bit of my acetone that you guys see me using all the time on a small rag and I'll wipe these joints down so they're perfectly clean. That acetone will wipe that excess paint right off of there. It doesn't hurt the plastic whatsoever. So I'll have a nice clean joint and then I put glue in there. And when I stick this together, guys, uh, all you have to do if you don't believe me about this uh, tester's glue is just get a couple of bare pieces of styrene and glue them together and come back in a, in a few hours and try to pull it apart. You're going to, you'll break the plastic trying to get it apart where with, with the CA glue, you'll, it'll just snap right apart because only the glue has bonded, not the uh, plastic. So if you want to build a model that way, more power to you, but uh, you're going to have uh, things literally falling apart on that model later on. It's definitely not designed for, um, for, for actually assembling a model. And so that's one thing to think about out there, guys. Now, uh, CA glue, though, however, on a resin model kit, being that resin is made out of a completely different material, uh, re most resin kit uh, manufacturers recommend CA glue to glue their models together. And believe me, I tried that when I built that three-foot uh, D7 cruiser from uh, Atomic City Models. And boy, I'll tell you what, when you glue that together with CA, you're not going to get it apart either. It, it actually does penetrate and bond the uh, resin together on that. And it's strong, as strong as can be, just like styrene glue works for styrene models. Okay, so when you're passing along information out there, just you know, make sure you... When you hear something from somebody like that, just make sure you kind of check around or, or, or maybe ask some questions on the forums because some people out there, uh, you know, not everybody is, uh, not everybody's opinion is correct. And I, and I even encourage you to go back and check around some of the information I give you guys to make sure what I'm telling you is the real deal. But uh, just using the basics and things like that, guys, that'll, that'll make sure that you build good quality models and that you won't have any problems later on. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start um, uh, tacking these... Uh, tacking these down so what I'm going to do is just basically peel these off I'm going to start at the rear now I want all my wiring to go to the forward part because that's, that's where the main uh, uh, power is going to be coming into the, into the model from the power supply and I'm just tacking these down in here at first and I'm just going to kind of move my wiring out of the way and we're going to work our way across here and um, actually this one here I want to put it up on this top side like I mentioned here we want to make sure we leave plenty of room for the uh, the window inserts and that leaves plenty of room around those edges for those to go in and not interfere with that and then uh, we're going to put one down here on the bottom as well and basically we have wiring on both sides remember so that this is going to bounce back and forth and it might not seem like these little strips are going to light this whole thing but trust me once those window inserts are in there and this white painted area it's going to light this up plenty good now back here at the shuttle bay if you guys remember, I had trouble getting those rear windows lit with my kit. Well, with this kit here, I happen to have some of those small SMDs uh, that Jerry sent me. And uh, I'm going to see what I can do. I'll see how this works when I put the clear uh, shuttle bay part in there. And we might be okay, but if we're not, I've got a couple of those SMDs that I plan on putting in here that we're going to make absolutely sure. We're going to kill those side window lights this time, guys. They will be lit, I guarantee it. I'll stake my reputation on it. Okay, so... We're going to move forward now. We've got one more here to put at the front, and then we're going to put one up in that little cubby hole that I talked about uh, to make sure that we get some light up in there. And um, 
then we're going to tack this stuff down with some of our CA glue. Okay, so we've got those laid in there. I've got one more that's going to go up in this little section right here. Just make sure we get that kind of tucked in there. And that one's going to have to sit at a little bit of a curve, so we want to make sure that we uh, get plenty of that uh, CA glue on that so that that'll never go anywhere because it's already going to try to pop off of there with that curved surface that it's sitting on. Okay, so we've got all those laid in there like that. Now what I'll do is uh, I'm just going to dab some CA glue on these. Now what I like to do is I like to put a little bit around these areas here that you can see right where the wire comes onto that and then a little dab in the center and a little dab at the rear and that'll help kind of protect those wires from getting torn loose. They shouldn't. I mean, we're inside the model. What I like to do is uh, I'll tie all this wire together then right where it goes through right here at the front uh, I'll make a loop basically so that the model can pivot and things like that and you'll have some slack there where you're not going to be putting any tension on any of the wiring inside here and worry about ripping something loose. So in electrical they call that like an underwriter's knot or something like that where you know appliances and things they put a little knot there so if the cord happens to get yanked or whatever it's not going to tear loose on the inside but we're going to have a little loop just for some slack. So let me continue gluing this stuff down here. And again, just, you know, you don't need to put a big glob of it on there, just a little, a little bit, and that'll, that'll hold it in place. And again, the CA mentioning that it doesn't, it's not strong enough to hold the model itself together. It will be plenty strong to hold this stuff down, guys. Trust me, this stuff is not going anywhere after it's all been uh, cured here. Uh, one thing I didn't mention, uh, before I did this, I tested each one of these individual strips with my 9-volt uh, battery. That's very important. You want to test your lights before you put them in because if they don't work you're gonna to have to tear them back out and you're gonna you're gonna create a mess so that's another thing that I failed to mention there guys but uh, before you put these in just hook them up real quick and make sure they're working and that your polarity is correct you could make a mistake make a mistake and solder something backwards so again just a quick spritz with this stuff here this kicker and this stuff is already dry it's already settled down and it's not going anywhere so this is really, uh, really a nice little extra step to do when you're, um, you want to be absolutely sure that you're going to have something that's going to last. And, and uh, but you know, we're not going to have a lot of tension going on. But I, like I said, I just don't trust those uh, that the contact paper itself holding these in place over time. You know, it could fall, and then you lose some lighting in an area. So now, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to come back and we're going to tie all these wires together, and we're going to make what we call. Uh, a parallel circuit so uh, real simply here you can see I've got red and I've got green well I'm going to tie all these together okay so that each one of these is being fed power and branching off so that uh, if one of the components fails the others are still getting power so they can all work same thing with the ground and um, that'll be just fine and that'll uh, that'll make me feel a lot better about this model lasting a long time so uh, let me get my solder iron set up here and get everything ready to go I'm going to twist these wires together and then we're going to take you through the soldering process on that so we'll be right back with that guys All right, everybody, so what I've done here is I've gone and I've uh, finished soldering up all of my little connections here, and you can see I've got my wire tacked down here and to the other side, and I've worked my way all the way up to the front, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to make this one last solder connection, and I'm going to remove any doubt, guys, that, uh, that you can't solder through this insulation. Uh, the nice thing about this stuff, like I said, is that you can just wrap it around itself without stripping it and a little bit of solder, and that's going to make a connection, and you're just going to burn off the insulation and nothing else, so... We'll show you just what I'm talking about here. You can see we haven't any power there coming over to the other side. Well, I'm going to solder this right now, and as soon as the solder penetrates this insulation, uh, you're going to see it. You're going to see it make a circuit, and the lighting the lighting is going to come right on here. So let me get this uh, start heating it up. And isn't that cool? How they all kind of came on and started working like some miracle. That's just how it works, guys. Uh, as soon as you get the uh, use the right techniques for your soldering and things like that everything works just fine so you can see we've got lighting now on both sides and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna carefully uh, move my wires here and we're gonna I've got to tack these ones down here in the front just a little bit but I don't want to do that quite yet because I'm gonna be bringing power up through the bottom of the model and we've got to look at run our power up uh, through the model here that's gonna go through these slots where the pylons go so we get power up to the bassards and then we've got some power that needs to come back here and some lighting that needs to come back to the uh, 
um, shuttle bay area. But I'm just going to clamp this together uh, real quick to show you guys how the lighting is looking in this. And I'm lining up the pins here. Yeah, let's see if we can get a good squeeze on it here. I just absolutely love how well this model fits together. They did round two did such a fantastic job on the uh, engineering of this kit. It's, it's just fantastic. Look at that; it closes up. That's a tiny little seam there, guys. That's so easy to fix. But here's the uh, lighting, and you can see. Let me turn this overhead light off, and you can see that we're getting lighting nice and even. Now it doesn't look as bright as it should because uh, we don't have the window lenses in there. And one of the tricks that I like to do is when I insert these window lenses. I'm going to uh, sand the back side of those lenses because we don't want to see into them anyway. I'm going to sand those with some 600 and what that does is that collects light and allows it to gather and uh, it actually attracts it and these windows will look all nice and evenly lit. And you can see we're a little dim back here but that's because we don't have anything going on back there. But again we're going to um, either uh, use, the we'll see if how the lighting works from the uh, lights that are on that shuttle bay uh, part with the clear and if that's not enough we'll throw a couple of SMDs in there and I'll show you how I do that if I need to. But here we go, guys. Things are looking good. What I'm going to do now is uh, uh, tomorrow's video, I'll show the shuttle bay going in, and we're going to uh, make sure that lighting in the rear is done, run the rest of our power and come up through the pylons, the power that needs to come up through the neck, and then we're going to be able to seal this up and start doing our, uh, our putty work on it and uh, get it ready for paint. We'll take you over to the paint booth. I know you guys have asked a lot of questions, and I'll show you how I mix my paint again, and we'll go from there. So that's going to be a wrap today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and... Uh, so, again, uh, just a reminder, if you haven't checked out Simon Merck's channel, stop by and check him out, guys. Uh, I'd really like to see Simon do well out there. And, uh, 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 like I said, it's a great channel, and you guys will find a lot of tips and stuff just like you find here on this channel. And uh, Simon's building a refit right now, so you guys will find that really interesting if you haven't checked him out before. So, all right, guys, that's a wrap. Like I like to always say, everybody, take care, happy modeling, and we'll see you tomorrow.